In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the bulk transport of things. So what do I mean by bulk transport? From now, we've been talking about the plasma membrane and how it moves things in and out of a cell, right? Um, when this is happening, we're actually talking about single molecules moving in and out of a cell. What if we wanted to move something either that's really, really big or is made up of a variety of different molecules, right, into a cell or out of a cell? We're actually going to use two processes called endocytosis and exocytosis. Right. Um, this topic is in uh, your Nature of Biology book uh, in page 27 to 33. And it's also the um, the processes that amoeba go through when they're hugging things. And what I mean by a amoeba, um, an amoeba hug is how actually amoebas eat things through the process of endocytosis. All right, so in the study design, we still are in plasma membrane. We're going to talk about the roles of different organelles. All right, so these are structures that are membrane bound, usually inside of a eukaryotic cell that um, perform different functions. The, the roles of them, uh, including the roles of the organelle, the ribosome, which isn't membrane bound, by the way, are the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus or Golgi body, I like to call it, um, and associated vesicles in the export of a protein through exocytosis. All right, and then we're also going to talk about cellular engulfment of material through endocytosis. All right, let's do this. Um, so um, have a go at pausing the video here and have a go at the three good questions. Um, just do it in your book and we'll have a chat about it in class. Um, I want you now to imagine that you are a macrophage. So a macrophage is a cell and it's a merciless white blood cell that actually stalks. So you can see them here, they're really big and they stalk and they're like amoeba-like through the tissues of the body and they're always looking for bad stuff, the pathogens, dead and dying cells and other undesirable things. Um, when you, the macrophage, encounter one of these, your task is not only to destroy it, but you actually want to devour it whole. So if you look here, one of these bacterial cells is getting devoured by that macrophage and it's gone. Cool. So how does this happen is through the process, what we call endocytosis. Endo meaning in two, all right? And cytosis, cyto comes from the word cell. So we're talking about into the cell okay it's a process in which cells take in large objects so large molecules um, from the extracellular space so the outside space of a cell and we categorize them into either phagocytosis or pinocytosis phagocytosis means eating so solids and pinocytosis means drinking so liquids don't stress too much about that. They're both the process of endocytosis. They just happen slightly differently. So here's phagocytosis where the cell actually goes and the plasma membrane comes out to engulf this solid particle. And then this phagosome, which is a food vacuole or a food vesicle, forms. Right? And then we'll break down this little solid particle. Um, pinocytosis is similar, just we don't need to massively protrude. Um, we're just going to engulf the little um, liquid particle and bring it in, okay? Exocytosis, on the other hand, is actually the pro uh, the opposite of endocytosis. So while endo means into, exo means out of the, once again, cyto cell. All right, um, so when a cell needs to send out large objects and molecules, which is really important often, um, they do an exocytosis, and this happens often when we're sending proteins, such as hormones, in well, out of the cell. Um, both endocytosis and exocytosis require energy, and this is really important. They're both ATP requiring processes. And this is how exocytosis work. You'll have a vesicle inside the cell with whatever little molecule you're interested in there, and that vesicle is gonna fuse with the plasma membrane and shoot that molecule out. Have a click of this video in the PowerPoint and you can actually watch um, the process happening, but this is pretty much what happens. If you look at this 
secretory vesicle that's here, the membrane of this vesicle is made up of phospholipid. It's a phospholipid bilayer, very much like the cell membrane, the plasma membrane. And th so this is really important because it means this secretory vesicle can fuse with the plasma membrane. And when it does that, it can then shoot out any molecules, okay? If we, so that's the process of exocytosis, so going that way. If we look at it like this, we've got the process of endocytosis. Really simple, okay? So let's move backwards through exocytosis because exocytosis is going to be really important for cells when they're trying to actually communicate and stuff with each other, which is something we're going to look at quite a bit in detail later on. So the last phase of exocytosis happens here at the cell membrane, all right? And that's where, like we see here, the, the vesicle is going to fuse with the plasma membrane. But where do these vesicle comes from is what we call from the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body. I like calling it body because it's easier to say than apparatus. So the Golgi body is a multi-layered structure that's composed of stacks and stacks of these membranes, as you can see here. Um, and these membranes are actually channels which will modify proteins so that they can get sent out through what we call secretory vesicles. These membranes of the Golgi body are exactly like the plasma membranes. And so, as you can see here, we get this blebbing of these membranes coming off, and these this is how the secretory vesicles are formed. In the inside a secretory vesicle, you'll have lots and lots of the membrane of interest, and that will go to the plasma membrane. All right? As you can see in this little, oops, little gif, that's what's happening here, all right? So, where do these proteins come from? is the re rough endoplasmic reticulum, okay? Um, rough because it's covered in ribosomes, which we'll talk about in a second, right? And it's the endoplasmic reticulum. It's another membrane-enclosed um, organelle that's really flattened and it's covered in ribosomes. And we, the rough ER um, serves to actually complete the protein structure and prepare it for transport to the Golgi apparatus. So from here, we're gonna go to that Golgi apparatus we just talked about. We find the rough endoplasmic reticulum right next to the nucleus. Why? Because we're gonna have the information coming from the nucleus going to those ribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is the next part we're gonna talk about. So the ribosomes is the site of the initial manufacture of proteins. This is where proteins actually begin to be manufactured, all right? And ribosomes are made up of rRNA, which is the first kind of RNA we'll talk about. And RNA is just simply ribosomal RNA, okay? Um, what the ribosomes do is they receive the code for a specific protein in the form of a messenger RNA, which are going to be extremely important in the next area of the course. It actually translates that code into the correct order of amino acids. Remember, amino acids are a protein in its initial form, in its primary structure. Okay. So where are these ribosomes found? They're found on the endoplasmic reticulum, forming that rough endoplasmic reticulum, all right? And they're the protein factories of a cell, all right? Here's the mRNA running through this ribosome, which is this orange structure, and the ribosome's pumping out amino acids, okay? We're gonna go into quite a bit more detail about this process, but all I wanted you to know really is that the ribosomes is the initial part of packaging proteins for export by exocytosis okay so we're going to go through all of these processes to get to the to the export the exocytosis